From Erie Zone Government Access, Channel 9, from the City Hall Council Chambers, it's time once again for the Taxpayers Hotline Show. And now, ladies and gentlemen, your host... Uh, here we go. This is City Councilman Kaz Kwiatkowski here, and uh, I'm doing it solo again today uh, on this good, nice, cold, blustery Monday morning and uh, well, Monday afternoon. Uh, so we're looking forward to your calls. They're on the screen. The number is 870-1284, and <clears throat> hopefully we get a few calls today. Makes the time go a little faster. Uh, we had some questions last week. And I wish I had more answers. Uh, I got a couple calls into uh, the electrical department about that ordinance on the electric. I hope I have an answer before the end of the show. Uh, we also were hoping to have uh, some comments from Sarah Galloway. We'll get her uh, to talk about the recycling a little bit and maybe one of the future shows. And. Uh, uh, the, one of the things that uh, we had a complaint on West 19th Street about garbage and I did take a ride by there and uh, took some pictures. I'm going to submit those pictures uh, to our uh, code enforcement and see what can be done about it. it uh, it's very unsightly. A uh, number of couches there. Uh, it almost looks like it's starting to become uh, a, a, a little uh, backyard for for people. It's uh, it's in the middle of some uh, brush and growth, but uh, a lot of couches, and that's we are very unsightly. Uh, the nearest I can figure out about uh, the garbage, and I've been trying to get a more definitive answer, is that uh, the average citizen must. Uh, and, you know he has to he has to uh, pay for his garbage fee. Uh, he cannot uh, get picked up privately and get be exempt. Go ahead, caller. Did I hear you say that magic word, garbage? Garbage. Yes, we always have garbage on our mind. Well, you know, I went onto the internet and I saw the list of uh, 130 pages of delinquencies. Oh yeah, that you mean? Uh... Well, people, if they want to look, they can go to. GoErie.com and go to garbage bills. Yes, it's, I have I have that list in front of me. I have a another li updated list. It's uh, very embarrassing. Well, you know, it's very embarrassing if you're a politician because the newspaper goes out and they single out politicians, but there's more offenders than that that should be brought to, to notice. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, when you look at the list, it's definitely a who's who in the community. Yeah, and most of the people have multiple uh, apartments or own houses and all that. And how could you let it get into arrears to the tune of almost three thousand dollars on that? Well, I'm looking at a couple here that are ten thousand, uh, a few there in the two thousands. There's, there's quite a few in the two thousand dollar range. Yeah, and it was ten. And I, I noticed a couple on there that maybe are uh, six months behind or whatever. I don't think they should be singled out as to the ones that are have gone multiple years. And a politician should, you know, I, I understand that they're, they're going for elected office and they're being paid by the community, but why should they be singled out just because they're running for office? Well, that's... That bothers me. Well, that, you, you know, but... Uh... Uh, some, I know they're, they're, they're in, the, in the public limelight. Sometimes, sometimes the dirty finger that's pointing is sometimes dirty itself. Well, the dirty finger is at times nose. Yeah, they, uh, yeah, they, they do have, uh, they do have an uh, interesting party on this list. Oh, yeah, there's, there's quite it, a few it, in it, there. It, I mean, it may even have, some of these uh, centers. Yeah, it may have been taken care of, but... Uh, I don't think they've been taken care of. When, when you get, you know, these centers that are non-profits and all that, mm -hmm. and they're being ta taken care of what, with the redevelopment money and the housing grant money and all that, and they're going to the gaming commission here for, for money, and yet they're letting, letting bills go by. 
this is not right. No, the, the names, are, uh, there's a lot of multiple names that uh, it looks to be, you know, they're probably, uh, what do you call it, business people. Yes, there's quite a few of those. And, uh, you know, some, some that are definitely in the business of uh, apartments. Yes, there's a bunch of those. And I'm sure they're adjusting their rates accordingly for the renters. Well, e even so, it's, you know... And I don't think that they should signify that the renters, the, the garbage bills and the water and sewer bills should be in the renter's name. It should be in the landlord's name. And when he comes to get his occupancy license, they shouldn't issue to it if he's in arrears. I'm trying to remember. When I paid, I think I paid my own water bill when I was, I think I, that's, I paid my own electric gas. Yeah, they, they told you that you had to put the service in your name. The water too, was it? Uh, I believe so. That I can't remember. It's been a while. I remember electric and gas, the service was in, in my name, you know. When I was a renter. You know, I was astounded to see some of some of the bills in arrears. Well, let, let's use a term I haven't I haven't heard in a while. What is that? Scofflaw. What's that? They they're they're scofflaws. Oh yeah, okay. You know that that may be harsh, but you know when when you got I, I've been getting phone calls from honest citizens that have been paying their bill. You know. Yeah, you know, I heard a little lady this morning on talk radio, and she said she's going to quit paying her garbage bills, and she's going to put the money in, in escrow in a bank, and uh, she's not going to pay it anymore until the deadbeats start paying. And, uh, you know, she had a point there. Wait, she's you bringing a lot of... Uh, you can't blame her. No, she's bringing a lot of notice to the lack of uh, enforcement on this. You know, I always said, I stated it before, they should, there should not be a garbage fee pay directly as a garbage fee. It should come out of your taxes. Well, we used to do that years ago. No, and the whole thing here is, once you get a rear in your taxes, after three years, you're at the mercy of the sheriff unless you get in there and pay your taxes. Right. We, you know why we did it years ago. I mean, we were up against the wall with uh, uh, millage. True. So they designed this system, which uh, worked well until... You know, until you got all these people out there. Until people found out that you know there was no way we had any uh, power, and even that I've heard is debatable. I'm here, and, and I haven't had a call in the milker yet, but I believe they actually shut. They actually refuse to pick up the garbage. Well, that's because uh, the private contractor. Yeah. Now we we don't really want to do that in the city. I mean, because then you punish the neighborhood. But you know, we cannot no longer. Uh, allow scoff laws. You're not, you're, you're not only punishing the neighborhoods out there in that respect, you're punishing all the, the uh, tax-abiding people that are paying their bills. Yeah, as I look through this list, you know, we have professional landlords now, not owner-occupied, that are, that are actually, you know, causing the city distress in many ways. You know, they're running down neighborhoods up around up my area, you know, by refusing to keep them under control. Now they're not paying their bills, and, and they're nothing more than scofflaws. That's true. Did you uh, and we need anything about this uh, First Amendment right that council, or the president of the council wants to take away uh, talking points for the taxpayers of the city of Erie? Well, I didn't know they did that, and I, I'd be, I'll be truthful. be up for uh, a vote, I guess, this coming Wednesday. Well, I can't, I, in all honesty, I can't vote for it. I think it, there are ways to, I've never been in favor of uh, stifling. Uh, That's First Amendment rights. Uh, but here's where I think they, we need to draw a line as a council. Uh, it needs to be city business, stick to the point, don't be personal, uh, you know, state your case, and stay within the time limits, and I think I'm okay with that. Well, sure, and, and you know. But, but not, we're not going to talk. We shouldn't have to be talking about county business. Right, but you know who abuses the, this most of all? When the taxpayers up there, the city council, they're doing their doodling, they're looking at their cell phones, they're looking at their iPads, and they're ignoring the taxpayers. As if to say, why did you come here and complain? We're not going to listen to you. I'll I tell you what, if you cut down a lot of the, uh, what, what I call the non... The repetitious garbage? 
I understand that. The non-city business, it, w it won't be an issue. I mean, never, uh, when, when I was on the school board and we did that, we cut, uh, Citizens Be Heard was very manageable. I mean, there were nights, and there always will be, when you have a controversial decision, you're going to have some people talking. Yeah, but I think you have to gavel them out and just tell them. That's right. Stick to the point. Even to the point of, uh, I remember when I was on the school board, we would shut the cameras off if that was what was needed. You know, that, that council there, they, they took away CAT TV. CAT TV did a lot of good. They put the money into a general budget, and now they get $75,000 for this year only, and they want them to go out and raise money. I got my franchise fee. I looked at that this morning. The franchise fee is four dollars and eleven cents. Now, how much of the four dollars and eleven cents does the city get? The four dollars and eleven cents for the franchise fee, or do they get a percentage of that? No, we're supposed to get it all. I do believe. For the four dollars and eleven cents, and look how many people subscribe to cable from Time Warner. I know my service hasn't improved. Oh no, you get, you get all repetitions and all that. You know, last night during the Super Bowl. There was a, a movie on that was made in 1945, and I think it was called The Lost Weekend. Yeah. With, uh, I can't, Ray Milan. He got an Academy Award for it. I had the choice between the Super Bowl and Ray Milan. I took the Super, uh, Ray Milan. The Super Bowl was all over in the first half. Yes, it was. It was over in the first quarter, really. That's what well, more or less. But I, I noticed the... Uh, on another subject here, I noticed that the Jefferson Society is going to uh, request non-taxes. Yeah. They want to be a non-profit. Don't they uh, give money to people that come in and speak, and don't they charge? Well, see, that's when non-profit is a very misunderstood statement, and that doesn't mean you can't spend money or make money, but it has to be used for the purpose. It, it's complicated, John. It's not a simple, you know, it's just like, you know, you can make the same analogy for nonprofits that, uh, that pay their staff, you know, high salaries. True. You know, that, that what they mean by profit, this is what's very misunderstood. Uh, when, when you have a profit in a private business, it gets distributed as, uh, what do you call it, bonuses or profit sharing or goes to the stockholders. Uh, with a nonprofit, all the money has to be accounted for and, and spent in such a way that uh, you improve the business. That's why you see hospitals constantly buying equipment or expanding or expanding the staff so that they pay money. Just like colleges, they'll pay the professors more, they'll bring in more. That's what they have to do. They can't, they, they can't distribute money to, uh, there's no shareholders. So it's a misunderstood term. Yeah, yes, they do, you know, probably pay speakers, and yes, they do take money at the door, John, you know. But then again, you know, their uh, they're, they're assessed value, maybe they should be assessed on the land value and not the building land, and therefore pay taxes on their land and not on the building. Well, we, we need to have something, we have to come up with some kind of plan where uh, nonprofits are assessed for either public safety or something, but there has to be some kind of fee. We're not getting that now, and that's what's hurting. That's right. You know, they're talking $60,000 uh, with the school tax, county tax, and city tax mm -hmm. at building, because it's, I guess it's assessed at $2.6 uh, somewhere in there. Well, yeah, it's a nice building, actually, you know. Yes. You know, it's just like this hotel they want to build on the waterfront. You know, in order to build that, they want to strap another bond issue. To, for $35 million. The state's given $25 million. Right. And the citizenry has to come up with a guarantee. But here's the thing. They need parking and everything down there. It's going to encompass the GAF property. They're going to have to use some of that for parking. So what happens to all our plans of that waterfront down there? Well, actually, they're not... The, uh, I think they're planning on using the parking lot of the convention center. Though. I don't think so they're going to have to have more space. And where the only space available is the GAF property. 
Well, we'll have to wait and see. I, you know, you, I'm. Well, they say the county council. Well, I, I, I'm on record as being uh, <coughs> a little wary about entering into another bond agreement. Uh, sure, you know, and I understand right now it's it's at a three-three area. Now I don't know if the county executive can override a three-three and give her deciding vote, but if she does, Lord help us taxpayers, because she's a liberal, thinks that there's no bottom to the well. So, well, I'll get off, and maybe I'll, somebody else wants to get in on this conversation. If, if I think this having a, 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 a what kind of a, it's a, a study session for the garbage fees, I think that's a joke. The horse is already out of the barn, and we know that we're there. And, well, uh, hang, hang tight. I have uh, something I'm going to uh, present that I think, you know, m might be some new territory and so I, I'm I'll be uh, proposing it I'll be proposing that yeah Wednesday but, uh, uh, how, did you ever find out how much the tipping fees cost with wet cardboard and how much we would receive from dry cardboard or any of that no that's what I was checking on John and I remember that's what I have a call in and I haven't got a call back yet it's a little tough for me. I'm not down at City Hall like I used to be. I imagine. So I got to come in and, you know, so I'll get that answer. Yeah, okay. Then. Call back if nobody calls in. All right. And uh, getting back to uh, yeah, the bond issue. That, <clears throat> the We have, uh, I see that uh, this. Go ahead, caller. Hi, Cass. How you doing? Oh, good. Hey, uh, on this garbage fees. Uh, can't these people be arrested for theft of services? Well, you know, I, I think they're, they're, uh, just hang tight. I'm going to, I got an idea that I'm going to present uh, Wednesday that may answer your question. Yeah, because I mean, they're, they're actually stealing. Well, sure they are. They're, they're, I call them scofflaws. That's a... Yeah, and plus they're stealing from me because I pay my garbage fee. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. It's, it's not the only reason why we raise garbage fees. There are other reasons, okay? But it doesn't help when, when you got that kind of money sitting in the background that the city could be using. That's true. And, and, and it's just, you know, when you look at the list, it's embarrassing that there's multiple names on there. Yeah, I gotta that, get a hold of that list. Well, it's, uh, I think WICU had it on their website. I'm gonna look it up. But if, you, if not, I'd be glad to show it to you. I got it here and it's when you look at the names, I mean, some of them are, here's one, uh, three, four, five, you got about 10 or 11 properties. They're all around 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, all over 1,000. Now you think about that, you know. Oh, well, sure, I know guys that... Professional landlords, I call them. I know, I know people who are landlords, and they say, they include it in their rent, that way there's no problem. Yeah, that's the way it's supposed to be, but if they, that way, you know, but it's up to the landlord to pay the garbage bill. That's true. See, now they're blaming the tenants, but if that's part of your garbage bill and the landlord doesn't pay it, then you know where the problem lies. It's with the landlords. And this is nothing new. Do you remember Mario Bagnoni? He was disgusted with when they were raising the rates of their garbage. Mm -hmm. He told everybody, don't pay your bill because a lot of people aren't. That was, this has happened years back. And that, that's what caused the problem. And then you see, do you remember? Elmer Vioni brought a, gar a bag of garbage up at the city council meeting one night and threatened to dump it on the floor. Well, he did one time. I think they kicked him out. I did, yeah, they didn't do it. Then, then the council, the one he it, said he had a banana skin, he said, guess what I did with it? I flushed it. Wasn't it Elmer's uh, market? Yeah, Elmer, yeah, he was on 6th and Wallace, so a real great guy. Yeah, he, he, see, the problem with the, Mario shouldn't have told him that because that caused us a lot of grief. I know, but he was disgusted with it, and he says, you know, yeah, he, he was, and, and, but, you know, now we're paying for it, and when you look at this list, it's just like, uh, I mean, there's one, there's one in here for $10,000, <laughs> you know, and there, there's, there's uh, prominent members of the community on this list, that's what I'll tell you. Yes, I'm sure there is. Oh, yeah. and, and I'm sure, you know, I have no problem in publishing this list, I have no problem in... Uh, Quick information. There, there's a new law coming down in Pennsylvania that may address this even uh, to a harsher degree. I'm going to check on that law. I was just given a copy of it the other day. It's something that's pending in the House. 
and I want to see, you know, when I talk to uh, Pat or Flo, or I want to see where, where it is. But these people are, they're, they're scofflaws. They're, you know, to the, to the rural people that, you know, that, that truly can't afford this, I'm, I'm sure there's a way out. But a lot of these names are not little people. They're, they're definitely big corporations and people that are professionals. You know, that, that, you know, there's much more of them than there are, you know, the average everyday person. Oh, yeah. Now, if the city didn't pick their garbage up, why couldn't the city cite them for littering or whatever, you know I mean? We could, but we're going to end up probably picking up the garbage anyway. That's why I want to see if there's, uh, I, I have a couple ideas I want to present, and I want to see if it will help, you know, bring us to a head a little bit. I hope it works. Because a lot of honest people are coming up to me and they're, they're telling me they're not happy, you know. I know. <laughs> I mean, even when I was laid off, even when I was uh, uh, young and didn't have a lot of income, I still had to pay my taxes, you know. They'd... Oh, yeah. <laughs> and when you see a lot of people, uh, like, they'll fill a whole front of their property up with garbage. Mm -hmm. you see some poor old people maybe have one or two little bags out there. And then the people that, you know, have all this junk, they're not paying their bill. How fair is that to a person that's on a fixed income, you know? Yeah. And has a very little bit of garbage. I mean, if there's somebody that's truly having problems, I'm, I'm sure we can work out something. It's got to be one of the worst things that ever happened in the city. <coughs> What's that? This garbage deal with people not paying in the, in, in the administration, not figuring out what to do about it. Well, we didn't. I think for years they thought it wasn't much of a problem, but it's growing, you know. It's not the, and I'll say this publicly, it's not the only reason your rates went up because tipping fees go up, gas has gone up. Yeah. You know, this is a small part of it, but it is, it is a part of it. But it's more, uh, it's a perception by the public that we're not doing our job. That's true. That's just what I said. Yeah, and, and, and the perception is that they, they feel that's one of the biggest causes for their garbage bill. And even if it isn't, that's the perception, and I think we, as a, as a the council, the administration, uh, we have to get a unified effort to, to plug this hole, because it's it's a it's when you look at you know there's people on there that leaders of the community that are out there pointing fingers at people when when they're when they're on this list. Yeah, another thing to plug. I see in my neighborhood, you'll see, I never see a blue bag out there or cardboard. A lot of people, they just dump everything in a bag. They don't recycle. No, they don't because they don't, you know, we haven't done a good job of explaining, you know, what, and I, that part of that's my fault. I'm going to try to get the, uh, the numbers a little bit more definitive about how much we save when we do recycle. And another thing, too, did you ever, look, when you said that we don't recycle, you rinse all this garbage out of your containers. Do you ever try to rinse a mayonnaise out of a mayonnaise jar or peanut butter? Yeah, I... Well, and your sewer bill's going up. Yeah, that's the problem. Uh, Come on. I do clean mine, and I tell you what, it's not easy. Yeah, no, I do. You know, you, you try to let it soak for a while, then sometimes you put it in the dishwasher. Yeah. And then, and then, throw, yeah. then throw the empty jar in, in the recyclables. Right, that's what we do. I mean, all the time. When we pack everything neatly so the garbage men have no problem taking it and whatever. But I have a reason. I, but I have a feeling a lot of people don't do that. They just either toss it, oh, yeah, toss I, it dirty, or toss it in with the garbage. You know. Well, certain neighbors of mine they put them big industrial black garbage bags out there and just chuck full of stuff. And you know, I never see a blue bag, never see a cardboard out there, nothing. Yeah, some people don't care. I mean, they just. And they're probably not paying their garbage bill. Well, you know it. It was brought up like, you know, but can, can a person go for private hauling, you know? Sure. But the problem would be that if they told us they were doing that, then all they would have to do is slip their garbage on their neighbor's property, you know? Oh, yeah, that's true. So that, that, would, that would increase the cost of, uh, to us, you know, without having the benefit. So it, it's a tough system, you know. It, Somebody is putting that garbage on your property, you just kind of watch them and then go take it and throw it on their porch some night. Yeah. What we should have done years ago, we didn't do it, is either, uh, there were many systems there. Some towns use the, uh, the container method, others use a, uh, a bag with a seal on it, you know. Yeah. An official seal that you buy the bags and then you use them, you know. I think with the Lincoln charge, like for so many bags, you can have a tag on each bag, that's how they used to do it on Milk Creek. 
Yeah. I mean, there's ways around, you know, but, uh, you know, I, I don't see anything happening. Okay, I'm going to watch the council meeting and see your new ideas there, and uh, I'm going to check up on this. Well, it's, pro it's probably going to be, uh, we're, we're going to have that meeting in the back, so I'll probably have to read the paper. Yeah, I will. Because the, the meeting is going to be at the finance meeting a after the council meeting. Oh, okay. Those, are, they don't televise, but... Yeah. Uh, Right afterwards, I'll be glad to, uh, you know, next show, I'll, I'll be glad to go over it in detail. Okay, Cass, thanks a lot. Okay, I'm still finalizing it, but I pretty well got it put together. Okay, thanks. Okay. Bye. You're getting me a garbage. That's, uh, when you look at the list, it's just embarrassing. I mean, go ahead, caller. Yep. Hi. Hi. Yeah, you've heard the term before that uh, perception is reality, right? Yes, I use that term all the time because it's true. It is, you know. <coughs> you know, I just can't believe that our city council uh, can't come up with that. What's your solution to this problem? Well, I don't want to release it yet. I'm going to release it right uh, prior to the meeting Wednesday because I'm still finalizing it. Uh -huh. But uh, I've been working on it, and I've been talking with other people. I still got a couple more issues, but uh, every council person was encouraged to come up with something. And I think this council, I will say, is a little bit more proactive because it, it's it, it's become a major issue, and it's something we just can't uh, sit back on. Well, and it, it, this ain't the only issue. There's the landlord issue. You know, our, our town is changing. And we're going to have to, you know, uh, come up with some solutions. Yeah, our town, our town is changing. I, I would like to know if any of you council people take the time to ride through the neighborhood, the I, lower east side, I, the lower west side, and see. Well, uh, I do. I, I tell you what, I, I have meetings quite frequently uh, in the Little Italy section. I belong to a couple of organizations there, so I do do ride through the lower west side and the middle west side. Uh, the east side, I, I attend mass at one of the inner city churches. Uh, I do make it a point to drive through there frequently. So yes, I am aware. That was one of my live and you know, and I know that. But you know, like the mayor, does he ever just get in his car and ride East Avenue and go up and down 20th, 21st, 26th? Uh, you know, it's it's really depressing. Well, it's it's getting. Even even places you didn't think were going to be, uh, we got issues now with uh, we we don't the, the people that own these buildings are not always what I call owner occupied landlords now. Well, yeah, that's what that problem is. You know, you talk about the neighborhoods that we all grew up in. Well, they were all single family dwellings. Or or yeah, you know, if, and if you rented, the landlord usually lived on the block or in the same house. You know, when I first rented, my landlord lived downstairs from me. Yeah. So, I mean, I couldn't pull any crap on him, you know, he, he made sure, you know, and, you know, we, we both got along and we kept the property clean, you know. Well, see, you got, these, uh, you got these people that just eat up these houses, buy them up, and then they rent them out, and they're, where are they? They're out in Mill Creek. Well, yeah, that's the problem, or, or they're down in South Carolina. Well, I wish our mayor would, you know, maybe take a, a, an initiative and, and, like, say, springtime's coming up. You know, we always do this uh, spring cleanup. Right. You know, I wish he'd get out there and, and tell the people, encourage the people, get a broom, get a rake, you know, just spruce up your house a little. Maybe he can come up with some kind of program or something. But you just never see the guy. Well, you know, I, I took a ride. This, this one gentleman told me uh, at West 19th Street behind a country fair. And it's right next to, I think that stairway's there at uh, 19th and Sassafras. Uh -huh. And it looks like there's a, uh, the chairs are <laughs> they're almost arranged like somebody's living there almost, you know. And, and the city is really, it's, it's really becoming depressing, I'm telling you. Well, you know, the, the problem is that we, uh, we have a lot of unoccupied houses. We have a lot of them that are that are owned by landlords that, that aren't present. Well, here's the question. In, in, in my neighborhood, we got uh, young college kids who don't feel the same obligation that, you know, to, to, keep, to keep the property clean. 
Here, here's a question for you. You know, the mayor, every time somebody brings up something about delinquent uh, taxpayers or you now this garbage uh, issue and that, well, we have a mechanism in place where we will put a lien on the property. Well, why can't you guys uh, enforce or come up with a new ordinance mm -hmm. that um, moves that time a lot quicker? Well, I think... Like, I mean, these... Some of these, you know, when they go up for sheriff's sale or whatever, yeah. I mean, that's supposed to be, you're talking years and years and years. Well, I'm going to take your, your, your points down, and when we meet Wednesday, uh, along with my idea, I'm going to present what some of the people have asked me to do. We, we need to look at some new methods. We cannot, I mean, if you lien a property, I, I assume you own your home, right? Yes, I do. Okay, if we lien you, there's a good chance you're going to sell your home in the future. Sooner than quicker if this city doesn't get turned around. But I mean, we're going to get it off you then, okay? The problem with rentals are that if the landlords who are the real owners don't sell them, and all you're doing is flipping tenants, we never get the money. Right. And, and that's a real problem. I mean, the individual homeowner, at some point in time, we will get the money. You know, hopefully. You know, because if we lien it and then you sell your house, we're, we're going to have a prior lien on there, a municipal lien. <clears throat> and, and you know what? At, at my age, you know, I don't give a crap. You put a lien on my house. I have no dependents. Mm -hmm. I don't care, you know? And that, that's what it's coming to. Yeah, it's a... Uh, we we got to start taking... Uh, got to think outside the box. We, we got a lot of... Uh, if you talk to the neighborhood watches that are trying to... Like in Little Italy, you know, the... Uh, Wally Brown and that group and all those people that are the sisters down there they're trying to clean up the, the neighborhood you know it's it's an endless battle with them you know well take it I mean I gotta say Little Italy has come a long way and, and that's due to a lot of hard work by a lot of people you a lot know. of hard work a lot of hard work but I'm telling you what as a citizen of this town mm -hmm. on a day like today if I were to get in my car and go down I would not want to even drive in broad daylight down Ash Street or Reed Street, around 6th and 10th Street. I don't even want to be there by myself in my car in broad daylight. And see, that's bad. When we get to the point that uh, people have a fear, you know, it's not going to help the city in any way. Nope. And, and we got to get this mayor, we got to get a fire lit under him. Well, we, what we have to do at the neighborhoods is every, every community is going through this. We have to figure out how we can make people want to come back into the city, you know. Why, you know, why is business not coming here? Remember Joyce Savacchio, she used to go out to the neighborhoods and she had that trailer. She would at least, you know, meet with these people, the community, if you want to call it that way. She would meet with them. You know, and that gave them maybe a sense of, um, you know, wanting to participate and wanting to do something with their neighborhood. When we have a mayor, that the only time you see him is like, uh, the block parties or uh, that roar on the shore, that's the only time you see him in public. Well, with the hell, then people just get discouraged and they throw their hands up. I think we need to maybe have a march down one of these streets where, uh, you know, we have the police with us, uh, fire, you know, zoning people, and reclaim the neighborhoods one block at a time. Where, there you go. Yeah. You thank, know. God, thank God for our police department. I don't know where they get their energy, but God love them. Well, how, about the, what, how about the fire department today? I, they had another terrible fire I heard. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and you got a lot of properties that are uh, not in the greatest shape. I know that little girl died in that uh, fire. It, I didn't hear that. that. That's what happened? Yeah, four-year-old girl. That it's, happened, yeah. And see, so you never, you never want to see anybody die, let alone a fireman or a citizen, you know. Right. And then the police, the same thing. I mean, they're out there every day with, uh, uh, I'm telling you, it's, it's, a different, it's a different community than when my dad was a police officer. I can tell you that. I love our police department, I'm telling you. Yeah, they get, you know, the amount of gunplay that's, uh, you know, and they're doing a good job. They're, they're, they're clamping down, but it's almost like, uh, they're like the Belgian boy in the dike. It's a big job, you know? Yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, God bless them. God bless the firemen. Uh, you know, they've done a good job, and uh, it, it saddens me when you when you have a fire like you did today, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, get out there, our mayor. We need him out there on the streets. Well, I plan on taking a few walks myself, and, uh, you know, I, I do take a ride down there, and it's, it, it saddens me that 
uh, some of the neighborhoods that, and, and, and I heard them reminiscing on, uh, on a local radio show one day about the same thing, you know. Oh, that kind of thing. He turned a tear to my eye too. Yeah, I mean, and, and that's that, that's a fact. I mean, I I go to I go to places I used to hang out, and things are starting to change slowly. Yeah. It didn't happen overnight, and it's not going to be cured overnight, you know. You know what? It's it's nationwide. It's it's the way society is. But you know, if if we have leadership that can you know think outside the box, and maybe they can just make a name for our city. Yeah. So think differently. Do something different. Yeah, we definitely have to find some because have a chance to call you. So the, the way things are going, it's not uh, not very comforting to the big cities in America anymore. I, I tell you what, I can't wait till the day I'm able to move out of the city. Can't wait. See, I, I don't like to hear that. That's you know that saddens me. Well, it's just not, it saddens me too. I'm born and raised here. I have a beautiful home, but I, I, when you're afraid to go out after the sun goes down, well, then what's the point? That's true. All right. Bye-bye. Uh, getting back to... Oh, here we go. Go ahead, caller. Are you there? I'm here. Are you here? Have you been trying to say the word scoffa? Is that what you've been trying to say? Yeah, what did I call it? Hello? Yes, uh, go ahead. Can you hear me yet? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Didn't I say scoffa? Scoffa. Yeah. I may have said it wrong, but you know what the meaning is. You know what? Yeah, go ahead. Are you uh you you're on delay. You might be here and Are you there? Hmm, I think we lost him. We'll get him back. Uh Getting back to uh news that's not very uh, I hate this uh disseminating uh Go ahead, caller. Uh, is that you again? Oh, this is somebody else. Oh, go ahead. No, Kaz, you know, the, the trash, I, I, I have to say one good thing about them. The guys that are doing the work are doing a good job, and it's really for $200, and, and I'm not rich or nothing. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's not a bad deal because, you know, you, they talk about two bags or two of this, and, uh, you know, you can you put it out there. It seems to disappear in the morning. I think they do a good job. Oh, there's no doubt about it. I mean, uh, I know the mayor come under some pressure when he had him work in the, uh, that one day in the cold. Yeah, yeah. But, but you know what? They didn't argue. They wanted to get it done there. Uh, that tells you to, and, and these guys are not, they're not making a lot of money. They're not, you know, they're part-timers. Yeah. And they do a hell of a job. I mean, I wouldn't want to do it. Oh, no, me neither. If, and, and then you got to go and look at our elected officials, those people that work in City Hall. You can't figure out a better way to collect uh, $40 a quarter from people. Give me a break, Cass. Yeah, I, I'm not happy with it because... Down there, get off their behinds and do something, Cass. I mean, if the list was little, that'd be one thing, but... Yeah, it, 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 that doesn't... If they can't handle that, they ought to get out of City Hall because if they can't collect a lousy garbage fee, they shouldn't be running my city. Well, you get 4000 10000 Any of them, 2000 That's that's embarrassing. I mean... It stinks. It's stupid. It's 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 stupid. And it, Okay, now, and now here I go. The Jefferson Society... Yeah. To get their building tax exempt. You know how hard it is for you guys to collect a lousy $60,000 in tax increases and what have you. And now I know they'll get the, the tax breaks that they're asking for. You know, yeah. and, and and why? I mean, I, I don't understand how they can even ask. And what's going on down there with the, uh, the Erie Convention Center and, and the Scott family? That's ridiculous. And I went to the county council meeting. Mm -hmm. I was shocked that there was no one there from the city. Not one person. Not one council person was there. Nobody was there. Do you people not care that there's $300 million worth of property that the convention center owns that doesn't pay any taxes? Do you know how much money that is, Kaz? Yes, I do. And, and, and God darn it, they're asking for more. And, and they don't deserve any more. They get a hotel motel tax for $3 million. I've told people all along, who do you think 
is going to pay the uh, the bond issue. Oh yeah, if they belly up. And I mean, the they, thing, they, if you root for the Scots, that means you you could be put on the hook for that bond because the Scots could make the Sheraton and that other hotel they want to build uh, lose money. It could, it could. So, okay, let's root for the people that are in authority that don't pay any taxes, and then they'll sink the Scott family. Why would anybody come here with $150 million of their own money and want to invest it in Erie, Pennsylvania? I don't get it. I really don't get it. We are stupid, and we're led by stupider people. And I don't care. You got Mel Witherspoon down there wanting to shut up three people. And you guys are going to change the rule, the agenda, the way that's handled over Mel Witherspoon? Is he offended? This big state official is offended because two black guys and a white guy come down there and say what's on their mind? And frankly, the two black guys make more sense than all seven of you people. And I don't care what anybody thinks of what I'm saying. It's a fact. And if, and if he wants to shut up Mr. McAdory, why did he appoint him to the Human Relations Commission? I don't understand it. It's, it's, it's stupidity. It's stupidity. We, we have to sit here and watch it. Well, I'm not in favor of uh, changing it. And I won't, if it comes up for a vote, I will not vote to change it. Not four votes. And I know who they are. Well, I, I, I have to vote my conscience. And my conscience says... I think you will, Cass. But you, you want to know something? You can't fly... You, you know, it, it's great that, that you have values and what have you. And, and I respect that a lot. But when it's, when it's decided somewhere else besides those chambers, when, when it's maybe a phone call over the weekend, I need your support, mm -hmm. and they're trading off little things, a barter system, I'm, I'll give you this if you give me that. You know, that's not the way democracy is supposed to work. And, and I'm really disappointed in, in, in what's going on down there. And, and, and we're, we're in store for four more years of it. I, I, I really, I really, I'm disappointed. And, and, and we're financially strapped. We don't have money, uh, and, and, and nothing's going to change. And you know, Kaz, you might think this is funny, but in April, I don't know if I'll be able to drive up my road to get to my house. Why is that? Because it's so bad already, I don't like to drive on it. And when it starts to thaw and frost and all mm -hmm. those potholes are out there, it, I, I'm not going to wreck my car to get to my house. You know, I can control my property and take care of it and paint it and cut the grass and everything, but I can't do a god darn thing about that street I can't drive on. It's terrible, and you don't have any money for that. You don't have any way to fix my roads, and I pay a lot of money to live in this town. And that other woman that said she's probably thinking about moving, there might be more people that vote with their feet and get the hell out of this town because it's headed nowhere. And that uh, John Evans, when he said it's looking more like Detroit and everybody looked at him like he was crazy, he was the only one that made any sense because it is looking like Detroit. We're doing terrible things to the citizens in this, in this city, and I'm pissed. I can't help it. Well, I tell you this, I will be at the next hotel meeting. I didn't know about the first one. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, I, you know, I didn't get anything, but I made a note of when the second one is. You know, Kaz, and I went down there, and, and you know, guess what? Citizens to be heard? Mm -hmm. They don't move anybody to the back down at the county council. You sign up, you get five minutes. If you show up, you get three minutes. Well, I think you may disagree with me, but I said it earlier. Uh, the way we did it at the school board was you, you had five minutes and two minutes, okay? Yeah, uh, yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah. But you, know, but you know what? You had to stay on task. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and as long as you stayed on city business, that was okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can stay on city business because everything on that agenda concerns you some way or another. I mean, you know, if you want to come down there and talk for the up front, then, then you can come down there and pick something up that, on that agenda and, uh, and talk about it. But when I went to county council meeting, you know, it was uh, uh, the, the Scott boys, the younger boys were there, and another hotelier. And, and, and they, listen, their logic was, how can we compete? Well, you can't. When, when the other hotels... Yeah. Hey, here's what people don't understand. They're saying, well, the county's not going to pay the bond issue. It's going to be the authority. Yeah, oh yeah. But, yeah, the, yeah. but, but the authority, now I haven't seen their di uh, financial records lately. Yeah. But I'm sure their operating budget operates at a loss. Yeah. 
So they get subsidies from the room tax, yeah. from gambling, all that. So that that money is going to pay the bond issues. Yeah. Oh yeah. Probably, probably a part of that. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, that's yeah. that, know, yeah, that's I, taxpayer I money. On Sunday, a guy got promoted down at the uh, uh, Sheraton. Yeah. And he works for White Lodging. And, and I looked it up on the internet. Big consortium owns thousands of rooms all over the country. Mm -hmm. That's the people who's run. That those are the people that are running our ho Sheraton Hotel, and they're the ones grabbing the profit. Well, sure. The building. See, I haven't seen the agreement because that's a county agreement. Yeah, I know. But uh, the building is. I know. I'm pretty sure the building. Well, I did check. They don't pay any taxes because the building's owned by the uh, convention center. Yeah. See, I remember Barry Grossman saying that they work some deal and uh, Sheraton will never pay any property taxes, which is crazy. You know, you know, Kaz, and, and, I, and, and you'll understand this, but for the listeners, a $50 million building mm -hmm. pay a million and a half dollars worth of city, county, and school district taxes to, to the city if right. they were taxed. That's a big tax break, a million and a half dollars. And think the Scott family are starting off a million and a half dollars in the hole if they have to pay taxes. Well, sure. And what they said the other day, they're asking the city uh, to get a grant, which a grant is, a, a, they're going to take a grant and they're going to use it to help their project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? Now, yeah. now we're not going to have to underwrite that grant. That grant's coming straight in here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, there's no, and, and here's the difference between the Scott project and the county, where the county is going to get that twenty-five million, uh, then they have to still come up with thirty-five million in a bond issue. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah but with okay. the Scots, they're taking. I think they're asking for was it twelve to twelve to twenty million? Was it? Who, who was? Kevin? There, there was just in the paper. They're asking for there's a grant that they they're, they're eligible for. The city will. Uh, oh. Uh, oh. An R cap or something it's, from the state. The city will get a twelve million dollar grant. Yeah. And for, uh, for for the the harbor front, but they're you know. What, but they're going to pay. But they're going to build the buildings and then pay taxes. Yeah. And the other thing was they were trying to get a twelve million dollar uh, in the same issue that Brenda Sandberg sent to the state. I think that's the one I was talking about. They're going to get twelve million for Jerry Ud Park and some other things for the convention center authority. But, but with the Scots, if they get twelve million. I'd be glad to give them 12 million Ooh. if they're using their own money to build Ooh. their I, project. And then guess what? They're on the tax rolls. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, and, and you know something? It, it's if if we if if we were privileged to look at some of these arrangements that have been made for the Sassafras Street Pier where the convention center sits. The the convention center still owes the city about two and a half three million dollars. Good luck for the parking ramp, you know, and and you know uh, people don't realize the, the the scheming and what have you that goes on to get these big projects done, and then you know they're 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 called these great saviors, the convention center authority. Well, we don't have a million and a half dollar scoreboard in the year insurance arena because they yeah. ran out of money. We wouldn't have had that parking ramp down there looking like it does if if they wouldn't have got the money from the, from the city because they didn't have money to finish it. They're very good at getting this money. And, and now, Kaz, they're, they're saying it's, uh, it's urgent that we know by the 1st of March. Otherwise, we might lose the money. That's what Roger oh, Richards said. We're, we're always under a deadline. Yeah. we got to make a big money decision. We're always under pressure. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, Kaz, I hate to ramble on. Where's, where's the money? Hey, where, a lot of your time. Where, where's the money for the Warner? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, that's not urgent, but, you know, we got to make this decision in two minutes. And you know what's, what's amazing? I always ask people this. You a sports fan? I, yeah, I am. Yeah. What, what happened to Three Rivers Stadium? Yeah. In Pittsburgh? Yeah, I, what, it, what do you mean, Kaz? Uh, it's gone, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't think the debt's gone, though. Oh, 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 oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The debt oh, yeah, probably yeah, was yeah. rolled over into the new stadium. Yeah, yeah. That's, why I, that's why I laugh when they say it doesn't cost the taxpayers a dime. Or Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, you can't have a 20-year a bond for a, a car that lasts five years, you know, and, and the same thing applies to the Three River Stadium. You know? See, I'm not against a hotel, but you know what? If there are private government, private partnerships, yeah. Yeah. such as exists with the Scots were, yeah. at the end of the day, like, like our mayor said, he was in favor of, he wants a building down there, buildings that, that pay taxes. Yeah. That's, oh, what yeah. we, that's what we need. Yeah. Because well, we're losing... I mean, 
you know, 60,000 from uh, the Jefferson Society, that's gone. Oh, yeah. That's and gone. then we got some more bad news with the, you know, United pulling out of Cleveland. That might harm our airport. Yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, yeah. And, 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 you know, Kat, it boils down to some simple things. And, and, and the simple fact of the matter is we need to focus more on creating jobs and keeping the jobs that we have here. And, and we don't do a very good job of that, you know, because if we had some good-paying jobs, some family-sustaining jobs, mm -hmm. uh, uh, we, could, we could exist and, and grow and become better. But, you know, we've lost Kaiser, Hammer Mill. Uh, now we lost all those jobs at GE. Uh, you know, and, 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 and frankly, we lost Lord Corporation because it went to Erie County. You yep. know, that's, that's, not, that's not under, under the city, in the city anymore. It's like, like the Troyer news is good news for the area, but yeah, yeah. not so much for us in the city. But. Yeah. And, and you know something, when I look at some of the other projects that we're chasing, you know, uh, John Elliott wants to create 40 jitney drivers out in Harbor Creek. Well, you know, those aren't really good paying jobs, but they're jobs. You know, I'll admit that. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see, Kat. But we have to, like you're right, we have to start uh, creating. There has to be more of a focus on that. You know, the, uh, and, and if we don't have jobs, we're, we are going to look like Detroit. We will. You know, I might not be here for it, but... This morning, Cleveland's lamenting the loss of 470 jobs yeah. from the airport. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Now, we don't, we don't want to lose, like, a couple people here. You know, and something bad happened to the airport down in Pittsburgh, too. They shipped a whole bunch of uh, jobs out to Fort Worth, Texas or something. I just caught a glimpse of it the other day. Yeah, just think about it. If they cancel flights here, I mean, it's a very simple matter. Yeah. Uh, if you don't get a flight... The flight crew don't stay in the motel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Motel don't have business. Uh, yeah. Maybe you don't need the number of workers at the airport. Yeah. It, it, we're on some strange times right now. Oh, yeah, we are, Cass. We are. But hey, listen, God bless you. You know, you got your hands full down there. Uh, uh, you know, it's... Uh, I will be at the next uh, hotel meeting, though. Yeah, I, I might see you there, Cass. You know, because I was actually disappointed. There were probably... Uh, people that didn't have an iron in the fire were well yeah. represented, but the uh, citizens, uh, they, there just wasn't that many there. There was only maybe a handful of citizens that were there. And, and you know, there should be a little bit more of an outcry about what's going on. Yeah, and, I, don't uh, know, I don't know Nick Scott anything, but I, I have talked to him on occasion, and yeah. I always ask him why he didn't come down here to Erie ever. Yeah. Hey, and remember, we monkeyed around, and we could have had a, uh, had a casino down on the Hammer Mill site. Yep. We monkeyed around and screwed that up. And now we've got the Convention Center Authority monkeying around down at the foot of State Street, and they're going to screw that up. Because one of these days, the Scots are going to say, thank you, but no thank you, and walk away from it. You know, and, and then, then what are we going to do? You know, I mean, it's, it's crazy. It's yeah. crazy. But, hey, listen, like I said, uh, have a good meeting Wednesday and uh, uh, stand up for what you believe in, Cass. We'll see you around. Bye-bye. And with that, we have to go off the air. We're out of time. Uh, thank you. This is uh, Cass Kwiatkowski, City Councilman. We'll see you again next Monday. Go ahead, caller. I got one quick question for you. Yep. On repository sales, when people lose their homes and all that they you know their wage the, the taxes and all that does that mean that if any of these homes that are late in their garbage trees they're going to waive that too probably if there's no money there i bet you it would be waived i'll check on that though That's true. That's but, it, but if you can't one. if you can't pay your taxes you're probably not gonna you know yeah so you can look into that there's another there's another Pandora in the box. Yeah, you probably, the only way we'd get any money would be if there's any money to be made off to, to sell the property, and it probably won't be. I, well, it could be. You know, it costs a lot more money to redo these homes than to rip them down and start fresh. Yep. Have a great day. You too, John. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been watching the Taxpayers Hotline Show on Erie's own Government Access Channel 9.